I opened the entrance and was speechless at the scene in front of me. Long time no see. Are you well? Because there stood my husband, smiling as if nothing had happened. Three years ago, I was filled with anxiety and fear during my first childbirth. Without any concern for me, my husband suddenly disappeared. Why is he here now? Why did he appear after all this time? Various questions floated in my mind, but before I could ask, he spoke first. I came to pick up our child, you understand, right? Huh? What are you talking about? I'm the father, and I have the right to raise that child. What I felt was not shock or despair, but clear anger. Are you kidding me? Who gave you the right to take this child? Immediately afterward, revenge against my husband would be accomplished in an unexpected way. My name is Elizabeth. I'm 30 years old and working as a pharmacist. I got married about three months ago. I finally tied the knot with Anton, my husband, after two years of dating. We met at a mixer. I was shy and didn't fit in, and Anton was the one who gently approached me. So, is this your first time? It can be nerve-wracking. Um, yes. Elizabeth, right? Do you have any hobbies? I might be a bit introverted, but I like Japanese anime. Eh? That's great. I've started watching recently, too. If you have any recommendations, let me know. Whether it was genuine or just to live in up the atmosphere, I still don't know. But the fact remains that I was saved by his kindness. After exchanging contacts, we started meeting regularly. After two years of dating, he proposed, and we became a married couple. One day he said to me, Elizabeth, sorry, but would it be okay if you worked even after we get married until we have children? Of course, I also like my job, but why would you ask such a thing? Well, if you wanted to be a full-time housewife after marriage, I'd feel bad. I didn't mention it, but... My salary isn't that great. Eh, really? His salary situation was something I heard for the first time. Certainly, I had never paid much attention to it before. All our dining out and trips were split evenly, and we never indulged in luxuries, so there was never an occasion to spend a large sum of money. That's why I hadn't noticed until now. But I didn't worry too much about his income. I had my income as a pharmacist, and... My savings were sufficient. Besides, Anton had been living alone in an apartment up until we got married. So, he should have had enough income to sustain himself. Whether it was a dual income or whatever, I was happy as long as I could be with him. With a smile, I responded to my husband, who seemed apologetic as he broached the subject. Anton, don't worry so much. It's okay. The hospital where I work offers excellent benefits. I also receive an income that allows us to save, so rest assured. Elizabeth, you're a pharmacist. That's really amazing. I feel sorry for causing you trouble, though. What are you talking about? Corporation is natural for a married couple, right? Thank you, Elizabeth. I'll do my best so that we can have a child whenever it happens. <laughs> Thank you. At that time, I was 28 years old and my husband was 31. Unlike men, women have a biological clock. According to information I read earlier, the likelihood of natural pregnancy significantly decreases for women over 35. As an only child, I had always admired having siblings, so I wanted multiple children. Thinking about having two or three children in the future, it seemed best to start early. For the sake of the children we would eventually have, I decided to work hard. Two years passed, and we had been managing our married life while planning for the future. We decided not to have children until we had saved a certain amount. We tried to be frugal and avoid unnecessary expenses. Initially, Anton was firm about this, but in the past six months, he had been a bit lax. This was because he recently changed departments, and in the new department, there were frequent office drinking parties. Due to that, he started going to drinking parties after work more often. As a result, our expenses increased, and our time as a couple gradually diminished. Then, one day, 
Feeling something wrong with my health, I went to the hospital, and lo and behold, I found out I was pregnant. Congratulations, you're pregnant. Upon hearing the doctor's words, tears welled up in my eyes. R really? Yes, you're already in the seventh week based on the size. Would you like to hear the heartbeat? Y yes I could see the small figure of our child on the ultrasound, and its heart was indeed beating. Even though it was so small, it was alive. Our baby, Anton's and mine, had truly come to us. Our savings had reached the target, and we were prepared for pregnancy at any time. But I hadn't expected to get pregnant so soon, and tears overflowed with surprise and joy. That night, when my husband returned from a drinking party, I immediately brought up the conversation. Anton, I have something important to tell you. Something important? My husband had returned quite drunk from the party. Ideally, I should have waited until he was sober to talk, but I couldn't keep quiet due to my excitement. I showed the ultrasound photo to my husband, whose face was slightly red. Look, a baby is growing inside my stomach. Huh? Elizabeth, are you pregnant? Yes, I'm around seven weeks now. Seriously? Wow, I'm so happy. Thank you, Elizabeth. My husband opened his arms and hugged me. He smelled a bit of alcohol, but I was genuinely happy that he was pleased. However, I hadn't realized yet that this pregnancy would significantly change our married life. Since the pregnancy was confirmed, my physical condition had worsened. Constant nausea and dizziness plagued me. Even if I felt hunger and ate something, I would vomit immediately. I could barely manage to eat refreshing fruits. This was the first time I had experienced something like this, and it was breaking my spirit. Why do I have to go through such a tough time? Many people suffer from morning sickness during pregnancy, but at that moment, it was so challenging that I couldn't help but wonder, why me? Due to the severity of morning sickness, I had to take time off from work. I had expected Anton to be supportive, but it seemed that was not the case. What was more challenging than morning sickness was Anton's attitude. Are you throwing up again? I really don't want to come home. Upon returning home, my husband threw such cold words at me as I battled nausea in the bathroom. A mix of shock and anger overcame me, and I found myself responding tearfully. Why would you say something like that? Even though I'm struggling so much, I'm doing my best to raise our baby. Pregnant woman, all go through this, Elizabeth. You're not special, so endure it a bit. Why are you saying it like that? We're a married couple. Can't you say we'll work through this together? Huh? I am working through it with you. You're just throwing up all the time and can't even do the housework properly. Look at you, eating out like this. It's not about that. Can't you help with the housework a bit? I work outside all day, and I'm tired. Since you're off work, can't you handle the household chores? With those words, my husband sighing, headed to the bathroom. The sound of the door closing firmly made me feel the distance between us. Why does he speak like that? I can't even function properly because I'm in so much pain. In this state, I can't possibly do housework. Eventually, I entered a stable period and my morning sickness calmed down, but my relationship with my husband took a turn for the worse. Conversations gradually decreased, and he didn't bother coming to the hospital on the day of the child's birth. Even on the day of discharge, my husband didn't come to pick me up, and I reluctantly returned home by taxi. As soon as I opened the door, I immediately felt something was wrong. What? What is this? Most of the things in the room, or more precisely, my husband's belongings, were gone. Valuables were also completely gone. No matter how many times I called, there was no response from him. When I contacted my in-laws, they were very surprised, but both of them claimed not to know where my husband was. Contemplating whether to file a missing person report with the police, I received a message from my husband. I don't want to be with a failure like you anymore. 
that was the message he sent. He no longer wanted to continue being married to me. Two months later, while finding time between childcare to clean the room in order to send my husband's remaining belongings to my in-laws, I came across a completed divorce agreement. I didn't know when he had prepared it, but it seems he had the intention of divorce for quite some time. Continuing to organize the belongings, I found an old laptop that my husband used before. When I opened it, there hit a shocking truth. Is it a lie? Anton was cheating, right? The computer revealed a large exchange of emails with the affair partner, along with many intimate photos stored in a folder. All of them were dated just before I became pregnant, and he was likely cautious, deliberately choosing to communicate through the computer. As our relationship deteriorated during my pregnancy, he probably started exchanging messages more openly on his phone. Perhaps he didn't expect me to open this computer, or maybe he had forgotten its existence altogether. He must have been deeply involved with the other person. Thinking about it, everything became inconsequential. I saved evidence of the affair, signed the divorce agreement, took it to the court promptly, and practically put an end to the marital relationship with Anton. This is fine. I'm responsible for raising this child. That's what I decided. Three years had passed since I gave birth to my daughter Charlotte, and when Anton disappeared without a trace. Charlotte, now three years old, had been proving her speaking skills. Hey, Mom, I want to eat hamburgers today. That sounds good. Let's have hamburgers tomorrow night. Really? Yay! I'll help with cooking. You help? Thank you, Charlotte. You're such a good girl. Holding hands, we walked from the nursery to home. While preparing dinner at home, the intercom rang. Yes? What? Why? Opening the door, I was left speechless at the sight before me. It was because there stood my ex-husband, smiling as if nothing had happened. Three years ago, I was anxious and fearful about giving birth for the first time. He disappeared, without a care for my well-being. Why was he here now? Why did he suddenly appear? Various questions arose, but answers were nowhere to be found. Before I could ask, he spoke. Long time no see. How have you been? What's this? Why now? There's no need to say it. I've come to pick up our child. You understand, right? What are you talking about? I don't need to say it. I have the right to raise my child. Anton declared, and what I felt at that moment wasn't shock or despair, but anger. Are you kidding me? Who said this child belongs to you? I said to him. Go back. As I was about to say it clearly and clenched my fist, my daughter Charlotte spoke first. Hey, Mom, who's this uncle? In response to our daughter's words, my ex-husband froze with a forced smile and tried to engage with her. W what are you saying, Shirley? I'm your dad, right? It's not Shirley, it's Charlotte. I don't have a dad. Don't say that. I'm really your dad. Someone who gets my name wrong can't be my dad. I don't like uncles. Go away. What? Rejected completely by our child, Anton was taken aback. Then he took out his smartphone and showed it to our daughter. Come on, Charlotte. Do you want toys? I'll buy you anything. No need. Mom already bought me something. But there are many new toys now. How about this toy that can make ice cream? I don't need it. I prefer going to the park with Mom. Anton was defeated by our daughter's words. Then he turned to me desperately pleading. Elizabeth, please, just let me in. Let's live together again? What are you talking about? You left on your own and now you're saying this? At that time, I didn't have confidence to be a father. But after three years, I finally made up my mind. You didn't have confidence to be a father? So you left because of that? Th that's right. There was no other reason. I still love you, Elizabeth and Charlotte. Is that so? Well, too bad. We don't love you, and we don't need you anymore. I decisively told him, and his face, looking stunned, was staring at me. Uh, Elizabeth? I didn't hesitate to tell him off when he let out a small sound. 
do you really think you haven't been exposed? I know everything about your affair and leaving me for that woman. What do you want now? You left when I was struggling, cheated on me, and abandoned us even after Charlotte was born. You've got to be kidding me. Who would live with a scum like you? No, no, Elizabeth, I've already broken up with that woman. I don't care about that. When I was suffering, you were having an affair. You abandoned Charlotte after she was born, that's all that matters. Whatever you say now, I don't believe you, and I don't have even an ounce of trust in you. If you understand, never come near us again. Never appear in front of us again. No, don't. I don't want it. Don't abandon me. No. Ignore my ex-husband, who collapsed on the spot. I called his parents. About 30 minutes later, my in-laws arrived at my house. They took the bewildered Anton, apologized to me several times, and left. Afterward, I contacted a lawyer to claim alimony. It was difficult before because I didn't know where he was, but now that he's at his parents' house, there's nothing to worry about. After a little investigation, I found out that his affair partner was also back at her parents' house. I decided to claim compensation from her as well, and make them pay in one lump sum. In addition to the compensation for the affair, I also claimed child support for Charlotte. I intend to make him pay it until she becomes an adult, no matter what it takes. Anton, who was lump sum billed for compensation and child support, ended up shouldering debt. Now, he's working multiple part-time jobs and searching for a new job. He is under the watchful eyes of his parents, helping with household chores at his parents' house, and seems to have no freedom. But all of this is his own doing. When I think about the consequences of his actions, I can't even sympathize with him. On the other hand, as for me, I submitted a request for a job transfer and decided to move. Of course, with the intention of never meeting Anton again. I am now steadily progressing with preparations for the move, as I will be relocating to a hospital within the same network. Sorry, Charlotte. It's just going to be you and me. Feeling a sudden sense of guilt for taking away the presence of a father, I spoke to my daughter, who was packing next to me. But she smiled brightly and said, It's totally fine. I love mom the most, so being with you is all I need. The most? Yep. So, if I can be with mom, that's enough for me. Thank you, Charlotte. I love you very much, too. My daughter hugged me tightly, with enthusiasm. In response, I embraced her back strongly. I will make her happy, no matter what. And we will be happy together. With that conviction, I smiled warmly, holding my daughter's hand.